In this one, I work in a tavern. And we're gonna meet some really interesting characters and see what this game is about in this early version, which I'm getting to play thanks to the team who made it. Go ahead and hit that like button, and let's begin. Tavern Talk. 57th of the Wake, Act 1, The Wayfarer's in. New Beginnings. I like the music already. Hiya, in keep. How's it going? All nice and dandy. Can't complain. How about you, Fable? All nice and dandy. Yes. Yes, all nice and dandy. I... I had such an exciting day. Really, really exciting. Did you go on an adventure? Even better. I took a walk around the grove, and then I replanted a mushroom that had fallen over. Then I patiently waited for it to turn into a mushroom monster, or a mushroom mimic. Maybe a gnome. Did it? No. But I got to take another walk around the grove. How was it? Great. I got to see the same stones, the same trees, the same amaranthine, amar amaranthine hydra guarding the entrance to Avalon, the same moss. I even got to water the asters. They didn't really need it, but I was there, so... Sounds very... exciting. The tentacle up here? Who am I kidding? My life's as exciting as a dried nut. Nuts are healthy. Very thrilling in sauces or as a snack. There are various types of nuts. Walnuts, peanuts, pecan nuts. I'm allergic. Oh. Didn't know that. No worries. <clears throat> I mean, I never told you. And hey, at least something would happen if I ate a nut. Just not something very fun. Allergic shock and all that. Does that count as an adventure? No. I think that counts as a mistake. So what you're saying is that you're missing the spice. Oh, no, no, no. I have a very sensitive stomach. I don't think chilies would help me much. Oh, I'm very good at growing phoenix chilies. I was talking about the spice in your life. Ah, oh, that's what you meant. Yes, exactly, that's it. No chili flakes, no garlic, no dragons. Just a lot of salt. I'm like a bland soup. So a classic case of boredom. I see. Do you know that feeling? When nothing exciting is going on in your life? Like... Life isn't bad, but also not particularly funny. Tried visiting a circus or adding some zest to your soup. Let's stick with the metaphor of being a bland soup. This poor dear is a little bit sheltered, isn't she? Huh? Drama. Buzz. Excitement. Something fiery. Go to the theater or a gala. Arrive in a hot air balloon. A hot air balloon? Don't they fly up really high? Yes. I think that's the point. Ah, I'm afraid of heights. And of people. And of actors. But apart from that, I'm trying. I tried singing. But what's singing if not the telling of a tale? How can I sing of things if I never live through anything? What do you mean? Well, day in, day out, I live in the same green soup of routines. Sure, I have my forest and I look after it, but I want to get out there and see something. Like, for example... Listen to this song I started writing. I wish to be a hero, slaying mighty drakes. I wish to meet a pretty nymph resting by the lakes. 
pretty nymph. That's pretty daring. Of course it is. That's the point. Finding them enjoying themselves in the water. The sun shining through the treetops, making the stream glisten in fragmented light. A divine beauty. I would love to sing about the exciting magical things I encounter. But to be honest, the most exciting thing in my life is coming to your tavern and discovering new drinks. Not a lot of songs you can write about that. I wouldn't mind a jingle. I'll think of one. Can I mention nymphs? I'd prefer if you didn't. Okay, maybe one day I get to offer them their own jingle. In the meantime, can I offer you a drink? Yes, I'd love a drink. The usual? Yes, please. That means a swift strike, in case you forgot. Thank you for the reminder, Fable. It's my favorite. Always makes me feel like a featherlight nymph floating in the waves of a sunny lake. Do you want to be with a nymph or be the nymph? Both? But mostly I want a swift strike. Message received. Though... Though... I was wondering... I've been coming to your tavern for so long and I still don't know anything about how you make your drinks. Could you show me? Really? Yeah. What do I do? Do I need to put on an apron? Summon a familiar? How do I summon a familiar? Just follow me. Welcome to my drink mixing nook. This is what it looks like back here. Hello, Andu. Careful, I haven't fed him yet. Can I poke him? Where do we start? Usually I start by figuring out what my patrons want. To make sure I don't forget what they ordered, I take notes in my journal. Let's have a look. You pinned my order. I did. If I want to look for specifics, I check my detailed notes. I'll keep a log just in case. When I'm sure I know what was asked of me, I browse my recipes. Can't just freehand mix something. Oh, can't just freehand mix something to see what sticks? No, I like to mix and match for a more varied result, but the right balance is crucial. I stick to my recipes. When I've settled on one, I can use the chalk to draw it on the board. What if you pick the wrong one? I can erase it with the sponge or pick a different recipe. My ingredients are stored in the five bottles. Very pretty bottles they are too. Dexterity, intelligence, defense, strength, and charisma. I think dexterity sounds the tastiest. I had a feeling you might say that. If I mess up or want to redo my drink for any other reason, I simply feed my mistakes to Andu. Once I'm done, I press the bell to activate the primordial vortex. Actually, I don't need to bore you with the magic. Just try making a drink. You've got this. Wait, I thought I was the innkeeper. I'm Fable. So, in my journal, a swift strike. Ah, oh, oh, okay. Oh, it did it. I don't have to manually do it. It did it for me, I think. Or do I do it on here? Be as swift as the wind with the swift strike. This must have... Any, this must have for any dexterity loving adventurer grants you, grants you agility, speed, and remarkable accuracy, and a tasty drink. With an order this delicious, you'll be sure to exceed any dwarf's kill count in no time. Lord of the Rings reference. Um, okay, so it does the drawing for you. So I want it to be this. Okay, so then I have to work out what does that, I guess. Ah, okay. So that pulls out that way. That goes up that way. So we give you this. There you go. <laughs> Thirsty boy. I see. So I'm trying to now basically draw it with mine. Ah, hang on. It's highlighting it as I hover over them so I can see. How to... 
Oh, no, that's not it. Ah, and it like... Ooh, so it reverses slowly, so I don't have to pour the whole thing away. About there. No, one too many, I think. And one of these. I think this might be it. Pop, pop that in there, please. A swift strike. There we go. Wow, it actually does teleport. Of course. What did you think was happening? I thought you were just very good at sleight of hand. I see. Well, give your creation a taste. That is delicious. I made that? You made that. Thank you for showing me the ropes. Thank you for your enthusiasm. These adventures you dream of. Aren't you scared they'll be the end of you? Maybe. How would I know if I never try? Do you actually want to try? Well, yes. I want to tell great stories, but... But what? Never mind. She could tell the tales of others like every good bard, you know? They don't do all this stuff themselves. Oh, the music change. How can I help you? A drink. For you? Right. What kind? Drinkable. Very specific, thank you. How about a spoken heart? Some charisma can't hurt. Sure. Whatever. So mysterious. A spoken heart, sweet and bubbly in taste. The spoken heart will bring your deepest feelings bubbling to the surface. Your newfound sincerity and heartfelt words will work wonders in boosting your charisma and persuasive abilities. Great for bards and emotionally repressed individuals. So you know this one is for that direction. It wants to go all the way over. With a little bit towards the bottom right. To about there. And there's like a touch of that. Boom. Getting good at this. This should be digestible. Maybe even tasty. Thanks. Almost washes away the memories of the banshee haunting the lonesome lagoon at night. And her bone-shattering song of sorrow. Almost. All right. The brooding type, I see. thinking about Fable. Just dreams. Yours or someone else's. Mine? Other people seem to have the courage to follow theirs. Why can't I be like that? Isn't that up to you? I wish it was. My brother says my dreams are a fool's errand. That I'm running away from where I belong. We're rangers, Fable. We belong to the woods, like the stream that patters down the mountain. Birds in the trees. We keep the balance. It's what we're meant to do. Is that what you want to do? Yes. No. Not really. I want to experience things outside the safe borders of the forest. I want to live a life so full of adventure that boredom will feel like bliss. I want to be brave and strong. And I want to sing songs about my adventures that make other people yearn for the same freedom. Of course, I could never leave the Ashen Grove behind forever. It's my home. But there's nothing wrong with going away from time to time. Right? I mean, 
My brother looks after the grove, as well as my sisters. I think it would be fine without me. Then you should do what your heart desires. Will it stop aching then? I think so. Yes. What if... It is wrong to leave, though. What, what if destiny never meant for me to leave? What if it did? That would be a dream come true. Be your own genie, Fable. Your adventures start with you. Thank you, Innkeeper. You really are the most exciting part of my day. <clears throat> Have fun. Off she goes. Hello? Greetings, traveller. How may I help you? You own this establishment, innkeep. Last time I checked... Hmm. With whom do I have the pleasure? The name's Carlin. Carlin. Sit. Carlin will do. But you can call me Seer or Lynn. Couldn't care less. Lynn it is. Nice to meet you, Care Lynn. What can I do for you? Have something to drink? You do the thing with the quests, right? So they say. Do you want one? You can have a look at my notice board. Ah, no. No quests for me. But I may have one for you. Or your notice board. Tell me more. Heard of a werewolf making trouble up in Tregaren, terrorizing farmers, tearing sheep apart. The whole program. A werewolf. It's new to me. Listen, me too. Didn't see one in almost a decade, and that was far south in Erever. Been wondering if it's the same one, just moving up like a nomad. Thought the werewolf hype died together with that one romance novel, Twilight. You can listen to that on my channel, Down to Sleep. I've, I've read the whole first book, and now I'm like almost finished with New Moon. Um, I like it. Anyway, werewolves. Ugh, you mean the one with the vampires? Yes, exactly that one. Think so. Nah, that just split society into two camps, Team Werewolf or Team Vampire. And we are, Team Edward. Which one were you, Inkeep? Team Edward. So far, Team Edward all the way. YouTube.com slash at down to sleep extra. It's on the second channel. Vamp. Ah. So you're into the fangs, ain't you? Uh, why'd you lick your lips when you said that? An Inkeep never tells. You little rascal. I like you. Likewise. What about you? Vampires. Why? The wolves... Too close to my kin, and... Yeah, I'd rather stay away from them. Is that the reason why you don't want to take care of the werewolf yourself? Yes. No. I'm just too afraid he might look a little too familiar to my uncle, Dragon. Would feel bad slaying that fella. You know, hunched back, hairy, crooked teeth. Is it a werewolf or just Uncle Dragon? You couldn't tell. Same fate had befallen Aunt Olga. Sorry to hear that. Nah, the hag had it coming. Never stay behind your grooming schedule, or before you know it, the next wannabe Van Helsing will strike you down with a silver arrow. Do the Van Helsings also hunt werewolves? I don't know. Don't care enough to check. Either way, that southern werewolf, yes? Right. Anything else that might help others get it done get done with it swiftly? Fetch. Pardon me. Should they get into a dangerous situation, they'll just have to start playing fetch. That works. On any dog, trust me. Good to know. Thanks, Kev. Lynn. It's not that hard. Either Carolyn, Carolyn. <laughs> gotcha, Lynn. 
All right, Chief. You got a name, or is it just in keep? Just in keep for now. Playing hard to get, I see. Well, in keep then. Before I venture on, you got a drink for me? Of course. What would you like? I'll take something powerful. Something with a whole lot of strength. And don't you dare give me any of that watered down muck. Something powerful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Southern Brawler. Perfect combination of offense and defense, dominated by brute hot force, aroma of ignis. Drink is sometimes served spicy, hot, or ice cold, depending what kind of fight you're looking for. You wanna fight? Huh? You wanna tussle? You wanna rustle? She's a wolf girl. Why is this not pouring? Come on. Get in there. Get in there. Pour. Pour. You've got to keep drinking. Um, there we go. Oh. Bam. Service. A drink with zero water as requested. Not bad. Just what I was craving. Thanks. Where will you head from here? Perhaps back north through the Ashen Grove. Got some business to clean up. What kind of business? Personal business. Care to elaborate? No. But you won't stop asking until I do, will you? No. My cousin claims her crops are being stolen by undead snails. Obviously, I'm pretty sure she's hallucinating. But I did hear some folks complaining about an updead, undead uptake up north, so might as well humor her and make sure she hasn't turned into an undead snail herself. Something like that. It's odd, ain't it? Resurrecting the dead. Certainly unconventional. That's one way to put it. I think there's not much use digging up the past. It's just going to open wounds you stapled shut. Or eat your face. The past haunts everyone willing to listen. Well, I always say, you dig up the past, you get dirty. <clears throat> Would you mind talking like a normal person? I ain't exactly up for philosophizing. See, now I gave, she looks kind of regal, but the way that she's written here is very much like, I ain't exactly up for philosophizing. Like, she should have had, like, a southern voice. Oh, well, too late. You started this conversation. And I'm ending it. Alright. Well, if you find any more rumors for me or need aid, don't shy away from coming back. More of a lone wolf. Don't do groups. But sure. For more work, I'll be back. I'll be waiting. Speaking of rumors, you know how to turn them into proper quests, right? Don't want them to go to waste. Could use some help. Let me see your setup. So we can also give people quests. Ooh, this looks cool. I like how it's little scraps of things. This is where I sort all the rumors I've collected. I also keep them written down in my journal so I don't forget. Smart. I think the best next step would be sorting the fit and snippets onto your quest page. Drag them over. Okay. Babel's still here telling me then. Thanks for the help then. Put it on my tab. Oh wait, Fable is just what the name of the cat, like, the, they're a fable. Like, that. that's their kind of what they are, their type. Okay. Let's assemble this quest. Okay, so a werewolf's secret weakness is playing fetch. Previously seen. Another werewolf one. And that creates a werewolf on detours. A reticent Avukakin passed by the Wayfarers Inn, reporting a werewolf making their way up Trigarin from Erova. They pose a potential threat to help the sheep and villagers. Werewolves love playing fetch. Are you brave enough to take on the quest? 
And we have on. Oh. Okay. A new day. Number two. Prelude to bravery. Preliday. <clears throat> what do you have there, Fable? But then I'm just calling her Fable. I feel like maybe that was a, it was meant to have the other character's name and it didn't. I found this on your notice board. It says a werewolf terrorizing Tregorin. Is that true? It is indeed. Have you sent anyone after it yet? Maybe that hooded guy from yesterday? Not yet. What kind of hero are you, um, looking for? One who knows their way around difficult terrain. Woods, even. Preferably one who's good with the bow. One that'll tell me they want the quest. Ah. I'm good with a bow. Yes, Fable. I know my way around the, around the woods. I know, Fable. And... <clears throat> and... Maybe I want that quest. Just... Maybe? No. No, not just maybe. Since yesterday, all I've been able to think about is you telling me to follow my heart. And then I step into your tavern and the quest practically jumps out at me and I think, Hey, there's a start for an adventure. It's near a forest. You know forests. You live in a forest. Werewolves are basically just normal wolves, but slightly scarier because they're also human. But you've talked to humans before and you've got silver arrows for your birthday last year and they're just collecting dust in your room. And, and... And, and I thought I could ask you about if anyone had taken it yet. And then, I didn't think that far. I see. Or rather, <clears throat> I did. But then I thought, well, what if I take the quest? Then I have to go on the quest. And I have to fight the werewolf. Or talk to the werewolf. Which is worse. Because what if the werewolf doesn't like me? And what if I try to shoot it with a silver arrow? I miss and shoot a tree instead. And then the tree will be mad at me. But it won't really matter because I'll be dead. Because of the werewolf. That took a quick turn. So maybe I should put the quest back. Fable. Yes? Do you want me to tell you to take the quest? Maybe. I can't make that decision for you. Neither can I. Whenever I have to make a difficult decision, it's like I freeze in place. Suddenly I'm unable to move until someone makes the decision for me. Like... Like a slime. A frozen slime. A frozen slime that can't move. I've met slimes less anxious than you. You've met slimes. My tavern is open to everyone. Right. <clears throat> what do slimes drink? Water. More slime. Bones. You sell bones. Only to slimes. Huh. Maybe you can add my bones to your menu soon. You'll just have to pick them up from the forest. I think I would have a hard time convincing a werewolf to give up free bones. Why are you so anxious, Fable? In general? I think that would take up more time than we have. About taking the quest. It seems to me that you want to take it. But you're trying to talk yourself out of it instead. Oh, well... I do want to go on that quest. Werewolves may not be the best muses, but it would make a good start for a song, right? 
the prelude of an epic. Fable, the protector of the woods, the world, the worms. The worms? They seem like they need protecting. But every time I think about embarking on a quest, and I start to think more deeply about what might happen, all my bones start to shake and I feel dizzy. Bones don't shake. Your body does. Is there something making you feel like you might fail? Aside from the bloodthirsty werewolf, you don't know what it's thirsty for. It might prefer orange juice. It might. Well, heroes have history, right? Great feats they can look back on to define their bravery. Inspirational stories that remind them of the light in the dark. I have the opposite of that. Great mistakes and epic regrets. Like the Mary Morgan incident. Or my first encounter with the Amaranthine Hydra. Or the reason why nobody wants to spend time with me. Why does no one want to spend time with you? Because I'm unlucky. I'm unlucky and whenever good things are supposed to happen, I ruin them. No matter how easy they are, nothing seems easy enough for me. Imagine there's one nail sticking out in the whole kingdom. Everyone will pass it, except for me. I'll get caught in it and rip my coat. Did that happen once? Once? I wish it had been just once. It seems that my life only follows the path that is the most embarrassing. Or dangerous. Or dangerously embarrassing. The curse of ill luck follows me wherever I go. Like an adventuring companion who secretly wants to kill you. No one wants to hang out with someone who naturally attracts bad things. You're too harsh on yourself, Fable. Am I? Just last week I wanted to gather fresh flowers. The daffodils are blooming and they make for a nice bouquet, you know? Or hair accessories. They always calm my anxiety when I have them around. But me being me, I confused them with their evil twin, the weeping Amaryllis. Now guess what I spent the whole day afterwards doing? Weeping. Like a baby. All day long. When I plucked them, they released their spores and I started crying. I suddenly felt all the sadness of the world rush over me. I've never been so heartbroken. I'm sorry. That sounds horrible, Fable. It was. Between the tears and sobs, I managed to make a tincture made from hogweed. It eased the pain, but the tears wouldn't stop until dawn. I'm so silly sometimes. And the Mary Morgan incident? Yes, the Mary Morgan incident. Didn't you hear of it? Thank Gaia, word didn't carry around. It was my very first adventure, the chance to finally get out of my daily grind. What happened? An adventuring party was on their way, passing through the Ashen Grove. Due to the sylvan spirits, it gets fairly foggy at night. The fog bears great danger to anyone who isn't acquainted with the spirits home to it. So they wanted guidance from a local ranger. A merchant up in Tregorin recommended me. I agreed to help, of course. My first adventure. I was so excited, but also very, very nervous. So of course, it ought to go wrong. I think it was the nerves. Why were you nervous? New people, seasoned adventurers, one stronger than the other, in shining armor and armed to their teeth. I wanted to leave a good impression, but my bad luck got in the way of that. How did it go wrong? They... I felt their condescending looks on my back as I walked them through the woods. Of course, I don't know whether they actually... looked. But my fear got a hold of me, and I led them astray. I blacked out, I think. I never got lost in the woods before. But this time I did. I couldn't see well. The blood rushing in my ears, feeling dizzy. 
For some stupid reason, I led them along a path no one should ever pass. Past the riverbanks of the Shivermere, home to the Merry Morgan. You know of the Merry Morgan, yeah? The wrathful spirit, known to drown men. Not sure if she really differentiates between genders, though. For some stupid reason, I led them right into her arms. I got scared, and in the end, they had to save me. They fought the creature, and we finally found a way out when dawn broke. And the fog ebbed away. I couldn't look at them for the rest of the journey. I silently bid my farewells when we reached the other side of the Ashen Grove. I was too embarrassed to speak. I'm sure I'm still their laughing stock at every gathering. How am I ever supposed to set foot in the adventuring world again? To be fair, it could have been worse. I could have led them right into the arms of the Chimera, residing in the Quag Mangrove. They say it has a taste for adventures. But you didn't. But I didn't. And the Hydra? Just a day after it arrived to guard the portal to the dream plane Avalon, I wanted to be polite and neighborly, so I brought it some homemade biscuits. I burned them a little in the oven, but I thought since it has fire breath, it wouldn't mind. So I approached the Amaranthine Hydra, and I have this whole speech prepared about how I'm looking forward to having it around, and how its green scales match my hat. But it was so tall and intimidating, I forgot all about what I wanted to say. So I just set down the biscuits and smiled awkwardly. It looked at my biscuits and then it said, By the rivers of the stars stands a man who reads the firmament's past. Some things are as sturdy as the gilded ice. Some things as changing as Leviathan sea. All chimeras hate mice. All hydras love tea. I thought to myself, wow, the Amaranthine Hydra has given me a riddle. A quest. Maybe this will be my first adventure. But I couldn't figure out the answer, so I left. And I tried to solve the riddle for three days. I was too ashamed to step foot in front of it again, lest it know I'm not worthy of its wisdom. But then I couldn't take it anymore, and I ran back and apologized and begged it for the answer. Turns out that's just how it speaks. It wanted tea. Did you get it one? Yes. Then you completed its quest. Three days late. If it had been an antidote it had needed, it would have died. Wood halves are as useful as an antidote when you've not been poisoned. It changes nothing. Adventures don't come tied up in neat, mistakeless bows. Your mistakes are part of your story, Fable, no matter how hard you try and shame yourself for them. I like you the same, nonetheless. You do? Yes. I don't care much for Fable the Flawless Hero, I don't think their stories would be very interesting. Fable, the messy adventurer with a heart of gold and an endearing personality. Great non-guy. Might even be my favorite regular. Don't tell anyone else I said that. I won't. Thank you and keep. And because I like you so much, I'm going to give you free advice. I'm going to keep giving you free advice. I hope so. What do you have for me? You seem to be very insecure. I think that's the biggest problem. But how can I not be when everything I touch falls apart? You know that isn't true. You're right. I'm a great gardener. Everything grows around me, but I seem to get smaller. Except zucchinis. I can't figure out how to grow those. So in a way, I'm like a zucchini. I'm insecure because I don't know what I'm capable of. You'll have to find out then. Like, on a quest. For example, 
Don't you think I'm a little underleveled? Do you think that'll change by sitting around? I guess not. Someone has to help these people, right? What if I don't, and then no one else comes around? What if I'm the only chance they've got? What if I'm not? What if there's someone better? The best thing you can do is try to help them. So what if another adventurer swings by and they're able to make the situation better? Isn't that a good thing? Four hands are better than two, and who knows, you might even end up joining a party. Oh. And besides, if it's a perfect hero they want, they'll be waiting forever. I didn't think about it like that. Maybe I should not decide to give up before I even tried. After all, I'm very quick runner, so if I screw up, I can run away real quick. That's the spirit. Okay. <clears throat> I, Fable, a great gardener and future hero. Charmer of nymphs. I'm going to embark on this quest and save the villagers. And I shall return victorious. Did I do it right? Yes. Good job. I leave the quest in your capable hands, brave adventurer. Would you like a drink to aid you on your journey? Yes. Do you have something that can make me more nimble and quiet so the werewolf won't see me coming? Something with a lot of dexterity. If I want to fight, I'm going to need that surprise round advantage. Or maybe something that can help with diplomacy? Perhaps it's just a hungry lost lichen after all and it needs a pep talk and a hug. Maybe we can be friends. I'd need something with a lot of charisma for that. I'll leave the choice up to you. Just don't pick a random recipe. Remember, your choice can influence my fate. Whoa. But of course, I'm sure you're already aware. Sorry for backseat mixing. Her fate. We could get her killed. So it's two possible orders. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So the Frosted Lagoon, physical and spiritual harm. The Swift Strike is agility, speed, and accuracy. The Spoken Heart, deepest feelings. The Southern Brawler. The Sparkling Nebula is the flavor of the cosmos, inspiring great ideas and great stories. I feel like we should just make them the Swift Strike. It doesn't seem like we have... Um, Like, maybe the, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe the Nebula one is, you know, fizzes on your tongue, rewise, great ideas and greater stories that could be charisma, but I just want to keep them alive, so we'll just redo a swift strike. And see how she gets on. I always think of, in terms of wanting to do something but not being sure about it, or learning a new thing, the thing I always think is the time will pass anyway, you know? So you can either have the time pass anyway and do it. You know when you think something, oh, but it will take me months to learn how to do that. It will take me years. It will take so much practice and it's the time will pass anyway. So you're, you're going to end up at that end point. You know, something would take you three years. Three years are going to pass. You know, and when you get there, you could be like, oh, I have that thing now. You know, did this wrong, didn't I? So may as well. This should do it. Oh, that tastes great. Very brisk. Do you feel a little braver? No, not yet. But I feel faster, more agile, swifter with my bow. Like my arrows can find any werewolf's heart. I'm sure the bravery will come later. But I'm sure it will. Thank you. This drink gave me some hope and heart palpitations. I think that's your anxiety. Maybe. You got this, Fable. I'll try. Have some faith in yourself. Okay. I got this. Much better. I almost forgot. I was thinking about how much your words helped me yesterday. 
and how I would have to thank you properly if I ever did end up, did end up taking a quest, so... So... I brought you some phoenix chilies from my garden. They seemed like something you might enjoy. They possess natural magical properties. If you plant them in the right soil, they can grow up to be fire resistant. Consumption can pass that on to mortals like us? Exactly. I thought they might go well with your drinks. They will. Thank you, Fable. It's a very thoughtful gift. Since I'm awaiting another shipment of infusions in a few days, I'll take a look at them all together later. Of course. Glad you like them. Maybe I'll order a drink with some next time. But first, I have to complete my quest. I'll see you post-victory. He's back. You again. Me again. And who are you? Someone who wants a drink. What kind? Drink. Yes, yes, I get it. Could you try being more specific? That spoken heart one tasted fine. He's an emo boy in his little hood. He just needs someone to open up to. One spoken heart coming right up. For the missing Cullen cousin. Yeah. A spoken heart just for you. Maybe it'll help you find some words. Good attempt. Perfectly drinkable. Might make me come back for more. Might not. Thank you. Enjoy. Charming. <laughs> Careful. You'll step on my cape. Oh, shush. Greetings, travelers. How may I serve you? Is this a Starian sister? Ah. Not another one of those empty babblers. I can confidently say I'm all but empty. That's what they all say. Seems they've given ye some more options than usual. It doesn't convince me just yet. Sorry, I don't understand. Of course. Probably forgot to give you enough intellect. It would surprise me if there actually was a brain inside that skull. I'm sure there is. Have you checked? No. But I can assure you I'm different from your average background character. Sure. But I must agree, you look more delicious than they usually do. Thank you. Though I should let you know I'm not on the menu. Don't worry too much about it. He's a tad quirky. I see. That thing on your shoulder, is it quirky too? What thing? Oh, my cape. Your cape. That's not his cape. That green fella on his shoulders and ooze. Or what's left of it. And the rest of it's on you. Aye. Pretty tough to clean off. May I ask how that happened? Yeah, you just did. Maybe I can offer you to a drink in exchange for the story and your names. Yes, I love stories. Well then, may I have your name? No, but I shall tell it to you. I'm Sir Alphonse Louis Frederic Duquette de la Sang. It's long for Kyle. <laughs> Kyle? Kyle. Well, Kyle, what kind of drink can I offer you? Blood. Or if you're out, I would also settle for something that tastes like blood. Or looks like it. Red's my favorite color. I'll look for something with red in it. Red, red, red would be the Frosted Lagoon, I would suppose. Protects you from any physical spiritual harm, cools you down even on the hottest summer days. Looks 
looks like this. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry, it's the bottom left that we want, which would be the Southern Ruler. Let's go ahead and pour a drink. For Edward Astarian III out there. What? Spilled up too quick. I am. Some almost blood for you, sir. Oh, thank you kindly. Looks delicious. It also tastes delicious. Very alive. Maybe as a chaser, you could let me have a bite. No. Okay. And who may I offer the second drink? Rhea Fosgrip. Nice to meet. Yeah, yeah, skip. <laughs> Skip the dialogue. Just serve me something strong. Something that feels durable. Tough. Like a mountain or the caves of Ur. One of those frosted lagoons looks close enough. Coming right up. Whenever I see a dwarf, the urge to commit to, like, Scottish, but I just don't want to do a Scottish accent for any amount of time. You know? <laughs> but it just feels wrong to do any other, to be honest. Like, I'm reading Lord of the Rings on the podcast as well, and we're getting to the part where the Fellowship's forming, and I'm just like, what do I do with Gimli, you know? What do I do with Gimli and the dwarves? Because I just, it's a sleep podcast, so I don't want to be in people's ears, like, you know, Hey, Frodo, what you saying, son? Here, come on, let's go. It's like, I'll just have to come up with something else. The Frosted Lagoon, you say? Yeah, see you in that Frodo. Going down into Mines of Moria. <laughs> A little bit to the back here. The Frosted Lagoon. A taste of the air, just for you, valued customer number two. Oh, are you hitting the placeholders? Let me try. See you many things, but not a liar. Tastes like a pile of rocks, just how I like it. So, Rhea, Kyle, what about that ooze filled story? Fine. Guess you've earned it. Alright. Picture me deep in the mountains of Dolvamir, with my trusty axe and a good drink by my side. There I was, minding my own business, digging for the good stuff, you know? Hit a gold vein earlier and deemed myself the luckiest dwarf of all times. Had a real big old pile of gold. Then suddenly this big ooze comes along and slurp. Gone it was. This is a very boring story. Perhaps we could go looking for my cape now. It's nearly sunrise. And? The sun kills you? Oh! Right. Did the ooze also eat the cape? Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> I love the vampire. Anyways, I wouldn't call myself the best warrior, but when that ooze slurped me gold, I had to do something. So I took me shovel, and dug and hit and dug and hit until there was nothing left anymore of the ooze. Well, almost nothing. Did you dig out your gold? Silly food. She dug out me. And guess what he was clinging on to? The gold. Oh yes, a big gold nugget. Should be enough to bring me to Beruvia. And perhaps it can even get me a dandy new cape? I don't think so, Sunshine. We had a deal. Ah, we did? Would you allow me to ask a question? What was that deal again? I get you to Beruvia so you can participate in your fancy vampire banquet. In return, I get the gold. But what about my cape? Where have you last seen your... <clears throat> your cape? Don't even bother, it's a lost cause. 
We've looked everywhere on our way here. Fort cursed chests, many-eyed monstrosities, undead goons. And I started to wonder, where in his life did this man put his cape? Where everyone puts their cape? Do you know where I put my capes? Where? In a wardrobe. Oh. So you can wear it inside the wardrobe lands. What? No. Kyle, maybe we could find someone to retrieve your cape for you. We could. Phenomenal. I could put out a quest for you, but for that we need a little more information. Good luck with that. First, I'd need to know where you last saw your cape. Hmm. I was getting ready to go to the annual vampire banquet hosted by Lord Strat in Beruvia. While getting dressed, I realized I couldn't find my cape. Oh, click past. Hang on. My first thought, of course, I cannot find it. The Cape of Invisibility. It's playing tricks on me. It's quite moody sometimes. Which is truly unfortunate when you want to wear it for an important event. We all know how important a fancy cape is for displaying your vampire status. Of course. Then what was the last vampire event you wore the cape to? My wedding. Your wedding? When I married my sweet Evelyn, I simply had to wear my most treasured cape to show how important she was to me. Evelyn. The vampiric Countess Evelyn residing in Marrow Castle. That would be her. Congratulations. Are you still married? Oh, of course not. I hate her. Every inch of her body. Turns out she just wanted... Spit it out, leech. Oh. What? My cape. Ah, rats. Here we go again. My sweet Evelyn stole my cape. What now? That little mean, vicious, beautiful beast. She, the thief of thieves, robbed my most precious possession. Wouldn't that be your heart? No, I had that taken out centuries ago. But my cape, I could never live without it. Oh, sweet, sweet Evelyn. How could you do this to me? I trusted her with all I had. That's rough, buddy. Perhaps Inkeep, that's your name, right? Sure. Do you think there's a courageous adventurer out there brave enough to retrieve my precious cape for me? I'm afraid that my sweetest Evelyn will kill me on sight if I ever set foot in her villa again. Yeah, I think we can find such an adventure. That's what we're setting up right now. So, Marrow Castle. Where could a brave adventurer find it? Deep past the Abyss of Dread, at the foot of a mountain range that looks like a witch's bosom, towers the mountain of my dear Evelyn. Queen of Darkness. Temptress of Men. Flamenco Champion of 1467. The right hero should be able to outsmart her and escape with their life. But be aware, she bites. And she may be invisible now. Alright, I think I've got everything. I'll write up a quest for you. I'm sure I'll, you'll have your cape back in no time. I hope so. It reminds me. Not another curse monologue. In keep quickly another drink. I don't think I can make it through another tale of woe without some artificial stamina. I need another lagoon. I I need another lagoon. <laughs> a frosted lagoon for you. What are you guys thinking of this game so far? Let me know in a comment if you've made it this far with me. I'm enjoying it. It's cute. It's a lot of story. In terms of, it's, I would say it's more story rich than I was expecting, which is not a bad thing. With a little bit of gameplay on either end of those stories, but I'm enjoying them. I think it's pretty well written so far. But let me know what you think. Some liquid stamina for a valued guest. And hit that like button. <clears throat> let me try. You got it right again. I might even last till day four with that. 
Kyle, would you like another drink as well? No, I cannot drink now. I'm consumed with thoughts of my love's betrayal. Oh, it ails me so. Everything ails you. The whole way here, you were complaining about having to walk. My bad form doesn't work as it used to. I'm out of practice, and slime weighs heavily on my shoulders. My back's all icky. By the dragons. Could it be because you insisted on sunbathing? Oh, oh right. Innkeeper. Do you have a drink to protect me from the sun? Perchance something that also moisturizes my delicate skin. I'm afraid not. Oh. That reminds me. My Aunt Matilda used to harness the power of Chimera's saliva for sun protection. Chimera? This thing, a beast made out of several animals. Got three heads and all. Made by the dragons to guard Gaia. Likes to eat people for breakfast. I'm aware, I just didn't know its saliva could be so useful. Ah. If only I hadn't eaten that delectable bear chimera in the Scarlet Caves, I could ask for a sample of its saliva. I'm sure that'd go over well. Actually, I might know where to find one. Really? Will you get it for me, then? No. Oh. Why are you looking at me like that? Miss Frostgrip, dearest Rhea, perhaps we can alter our deal. Ah, oh, nay, forget it. I ain't going. With nothing on me but a shovel and ooze goop, I'm no match for such a beast. No problem. I can make another quest for my board. And when will it be done? Tell me, when can I walk among mortals in the glistening sunlight once more? As soon as a fearless adventurer picks it up, and succeeds, especially that. Splendid! Did you hear that? A quest just for me. Let's leave it at two. Say, Innkeep, uh, while we wait for someone to do his work for him, you perhaps have a room for two? Possibly a room without sunlight. Wouldn't want Snow White to go up in flames right here. Sure thing, I got a couple of barred up rooms, you can stay there. How much? You can pay when you leave. Grand. Seems like they gave you more personality than usual. Keep it up. Maybe you'll become a real boy one day. Thank you. Enjoy your stay. You too, tasty creature. <laughs> okay. A chimera saliva. And the vampire saw their cape. And they want some saliva. And that is a quest for you. A chimera in the mangrove. And standing a chance to get some saliva. A quirky vampire's looking for their cape. And the vampire lost always cape on his wedding day. Although I feel like... It's actually... Two quests. It's the vampire looking for his cape. And... The saliva. And that one. What? What am I missing? Dun 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 dun. Oh, wait. It's hate for mice. We missed that bit. Okay. So it's the Hydra said that the Chimera hates mice. And we want Chimera saliva. There. Bam. Okay. Bring back a bucket of saliva. And then a quirky vampire looking for his cape, last seen on his wedding day. But we don't have... Ah, the vampire Countess Evelyn, there we go. I'm so good. I wonder if we'll find out if Fable survived. My infusion shipment finally arrived this morning. I now have access to some fey crystals and frozen pine cones. Together with Fable's Phoenix Chili, I've got three infusions. 
I'll unpack them later when I have time. I have a feeling they'll be of use soon. She's back. Hmm. Listen, I can fix this. Just let me pick up chamomile tincture from my treehouse. Oh, the arrows are in her. Wrong werewolf fable. Chamomile's proven to be great for wound healing. You've done enough, little fella. I'll be good from here, thanks. Fable. Lynn, back so soon? In keep. Say, did you send that blighter after me? I, I told you, he has nothing to do with it. It's my fault, my fault alone. Let me fix you up at least. You better keep your clumsy hands off me. Now, now, how about we calm the spirits a bit and you tell me what happened? A misunderstanding, I suppose? Yes. The elf thought of me as Uncle Dragon Lookalike. The uncle that looks like a werewolf? Yes. No, it's a bit more complicated. It doesn't matter. It matters that the elf... Doesn't matter. It matters that the elf has mistaken me for a werewolf. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Maybe, but not on purpose. I promise. It's just me and my bad luck. It happened again. Nothing can ever go right. Don't say that, Fable. Tell me about it. We'll start from the beginning. So, you sent me out to look for a werewolf in Tregoran. I felt agile and ready, braver than I've ever felt before. The quest that I gave you, Innkeep. I recall. Good. I have my shortcuts and trails that make me travel rather swiftly through the Ashen Grove. And by early dawn, I reach the borders of Tregoran. The Ashen Grove thins out at that part. You can catch a glimpse of wide fields, vineyards, and see a farm or two. Truly idyllic, especially during sunset. There's one downside to the idyllic sunset, though. Uh, it gets dark. Of course it does. And every tall, lumen person in the dark is automatically a werewolf, huh? No, but every tall, looming person hunting down the farmer's sheep is. I... No, I didn't do that. Yes, you did. And the quest stated that this is exactly what the werewolf would be doing. In my defense, I'm broke. We've all been there. So Lynn was busy hunting sheep, and in the shadows of dawn, you thought she must be the werewolf. Exactly. And then you need not one, but three arrows. I'm swift with the bow. I figured. And I prepared to fight, not bargain. So I shoot. Trigger. Happy. I can't get myself to aim right for the heart, so I aim for the shoulder. And suddenly the werewolf cusses and curse words I've never heard before, like a sailor. Well, how I'd imagine a sailor to swear, I've never actually met one. You're telling me you've never heard of a before? Hey, what is that? Why is it censored? Youth protection. The age rating assessment is quite harsh, as is YouTube. Ah. Anyways, I was observing the prey through the bushes and suddenly I felt a piercing pain in my shoulder. Not once or twice, but three times. Of course I cuss and swear, it hurts. Never been so happy to have missed. So I turn around, and ready to lunge at the rascal, daring to aim at me, and, and an orange gleaming eye stared through the shadows right into my soul. I thought, that's it, it's over. I heard the bells of death ringing. I stumbled backwards, tripped over a branch, and crashed into a tree. Ah, that weren't the passing bells, Elfie. Actual bells from the chapel in town. My name's Fable. Right. So they crashed into a tree, and the rustling of the leaves, cracking of branches, and high-pitched yelp. I didn't yelp. Yes, you did. It caught the attention of the actual culprit. He must have been on his way to tear yet another sheep. Perhaps this time even with the farmer's heart when our wrestling caught his attention. I heard the growling, 
and such a deep guttural growl it made my blood curdle. I swear I saw my life rush past me. It sounded more like an empty stomach to me. A big empty stomach then. Either way, bad. Very bad. A howl rang through the air when he emerged from the bushes. Tall and towering, glowing red eyes and fangs as big as my hand. Probably around eight feet high. Six feet, max. Eight. Seeing this tall creature sent shivers down my spine. You said that already. No, I didn't. Seeing this tall creature sent shivers down my spine. And I was frozen. I was sure the Mary Morgan incident would repeat. I'd stand there and watch everything as it happened, unable to move. He looked around and sniffed the air and his eyes locked with mine. But then I remembered what you had told me. Werewolves love playing fetch. So I swiftly slid down the tree and I picked a stick from the ground. The werewolf noticed my movement, but before it could lunge at me, I threw the stick into the bushes as far away from me as possible. I wanted to buy myself some time to adjust my bow and... The stick somehow also influenced Kaelin, and both of them hurtled down the bushes. And that's not even all. As I couldn't help but run after that stick, I noticed something odd on the werewolf. Flannel rags. So I forgot the stick and grabbed him by the throat, slamming him against a tree. He wiggled and twisted like a worm, growling and barking right into my face. I stared him right in the eyes as I heard the elf approach from behind, the arrow feathered in the bow. Don't, Kaelin said, and I lowered my bow hesitantly while she studied the werewolf's face. She growled, like she likes to do. Mm. Uncle Dragon, she exclaimed, and I flinched. That Uncle Dragon? Yeah, my darned uncle was in full werewolf transformation in front of me, right there, acting like the biggest, wildest rascal in the whole of the world. I was joking when I told you the story, Innkeep. I wouldn't have thought the werewolf was actually my uncle. But that's exactly why I don't do cases involving lycanthropy. How did you deal with him? Confronted him, of course. Knocked some sense into him. We tied him to a tree so we wouldn't get any ideas. I knew learning all the sailor knots was good for something. It's good for a lot more than that. Oh. Uh, I mean... Either way, the resolution was only half as exciting as getting there was. Apparently he contacted Lycanthropy at the annual family gathering. And since he grew short-tempered, he and his husband got into a lot of fights. So he ran away. I can't understand that. I can understand that all too well. And of course I can't kill Kalin's uncle, just because he's a werewolf. So you let him go? The elf knows a swamp witch that might have worked out a cure, dropped him off there. No more sheep Terran for now. So all in all, you'd say the quest was successful. With a few obstacles attached, and someone getting hurt. Listen, the arrow itself isn't the problem. The coat though, that was expensive. I'm sorry, really? Don't bother. After all, we got rid of the lichen. For now. Elfie, he even got you a keepsake. It's nothing. It's not even that great. I just thought... You thought... I thought it would be a nice reminder of my first successful quest. I like trinkets. What is it? Come on, quit being shy. We played fetch with the stick afterwards, and I thought I could bring it. After Kaelin brought it back to me. Had to finish playing fetch. A nice memory of sorts, you know? It is a nice memory. Thank you, Fable. I know just where to place it. Do we get to hang up the trinkets in the room? As a reminder? How about a drink to celebrate on me? I told Kaelin you have a hand for mixing just the right thing for any situation. Sure thing. Both of you? I'll pass. I'll run home quickly to get the chamomile tincture. See you later. Chamomile, chamomile. Inkeep, surprise me with something that fits my brawn. By which I mean make me the usual. Where will I put the stick to remember the quest of the werewolf and playing fetch? Time for the southern brawler. We got me a southern brawler drink. For the Southern Werewolf. 
I knew that them there was my uncle. Once I see his flannel shirt. <laughs> Here. Not bad, thanks. So, that little blighter. You raise him? Fable? Oh, no. No? Surprising. You two seem very close, like family. They're irregular. I see. Huh. They're still open? Yes. Great, I'm taking it. She took the quest that I put up. You still have arrows stuck in your shoulder. It is but a scratch. Plus, Elfie's getting me one of the hippie salves. Should be fine after. Alternatively, you could take a rest. Have some sleep, let your wounds heal, rid yourself of the ammunition decorating your body. Alternatively, you could mind your own business. I know what I can take. And if I don't move on to a proper quest without bumbling elves and useless relatives, I'll be going insane sooner or later. You want that? No, at least not in my tavern. I worked hard on that woodwork. Then do your job and let me take it. I mean, you already have. I'm just doing my job and expressing appropriate concern. You did this woodwork yourself. Excellent transition, then. Yes, I did. I built all of it myself. Why? Couldn't get anyone to help. I had a very specific vision. And too much free time. That too. Boredom does things to you. One day you're bored, the next day you're learning how to gloss wood. Do you know any carpentry? I know of carpentry. And of boredom. It's exactly why I gotta take this quest. Need to counteract the boredom before it makes my biceps shrink. I don't think that's how it works. But boring is not what I would call this quest in the slightest. Stealing from a chimera for a vampire's sunscreen couldn't get more reckless than that. Could be taking Elfie along. Fair point. Please don't. Won't. Don't need another accidental piercing. So the slave is for a vampire. Vampire sunscreen. Can't a vampire get their chimera goo themselves? It's a wyvern chimera. Vampires and fire don't mix too well. Also, if everyone just did their own quests, the quest economy would be in shambles. Suppose that'd be terrible for your business? Indeed. Does it bother you that it's for a vampire? No. Does it make you nervous? No. You did mention that you like fangs. Did I mention that I have a great sword three times the size of your head? I'm sure a vampire would find that impressive. Are they gonna end up together? Have you ever encountered a chimera before? No, not a real one. Got me thinking, ain't it kind of blasphemous to steal from a draconic guardian? Depends. You religious? Guess not. Then no. Would it be if I was? Hmm. Don't think so. Chimeras steal riches all the time, and they were created to be guardians of the protectors of the realms, by the protectors of the realms. So stealing something to protect someone seems in line with the doctrine. Good thing you ain't a priest. Do a piss poor job. Thank you. Is blasphemy what you're worried about? I am worried. Okay, nervous. Ain't that either. Then, what is it? Excitement, I suppose? Excitement. Don't laugh. I'm not laughing, I'm just asking. Excitement. I've never encountered a guardian before. And I've always sort of wanted to. Why haven't you? Ain't exactly easy to find or to survive. Seems like a great opportunity for you then. It is. What is it about guardians? Less about the guardians, more about what created it. 
Maybe a little about the Chimera. It's got a dragon head, right? Yeah, modeled after its creator, I would guess. So let me rephrase. What is it about dragons and chimeras with dragon heads? They're cool. Mm -hmm. Also, when I was little, my Baba used to tell me bedtime stories about the dragons every night. She was a great adventurer and encountered many of their creations on her journeys. Not sure if it's true, but she always claimed she passed each of the Realm Keepers themselves. Had little keepsakes from them and all. My sword's one of those. Passed it on to me before she... Passed. Left. One day she was just gone. Think she wanted to spend her last moments somewhere else. Like to think she visited one of her dragons one last time. Maybe she's off stealing sheep. Too soon. That sword and her stories are all I have left of her. Going on this quest almost feels like I'm stepping into a memory of hers. Did she ever tell you about the Wyvern Chimera? No. It was the only kind she ever encountered. She never encountered. Had quarrels with those feline ones, different varieties of scales, even a cow one, I think, but never found a wyvern in all her years. Would have been nice to tell her the story when I return. If I return. I'm sure you will. You can tell the story to me. I don't know if I make for a good bubba, but I do enjoy a good tale. I'll think about it. You already got me talking too much. This is you talking too much? You enjoy dragons? Sure. They're a fascinating creature. They are fascinating and magical. I used to pretend I was one when I was little. Really wanted their magic and their wings. You can just ask them for their magic. I'm not sure about their wings. Hmm. I ain't a priest either. Besides, I'm a warrior. Don't do all that magic. I like my sword and my muscles. They're a good combo. And I don't need to rely on anyone. Not even, not even dragons. A little help never hurt anybody. Last time when someone tried to help, they shot me with ar three arrows. They weren't trying to help you. They were trying to kill you. But alas, does that mean you do not want to drink a drink to pep you up then? Didn't say that. I see. That doesn't count as help. It's prepayment for me taking on your quest. Sure. You'll be happy to hear I have some incredible infusions. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a fire resistant one. That sounds unnecessarily complicated. Let's keep it simple. Alright. Bit of a boost for this body. Heard they're quick and toothy. I need to be hardy for its bite. Some defense. Or something for the brain. Maybe I can outsmart it. I need some intelligence, and I won't be risking it all for a bad idea. <sighs> Maybe I'll want a drink with an infusion. I just gotta pack, unpack my shipments. A what? Infusions. I use them to spice up my drinks. They'll grow on special abilities. Like the Phoenix Chili. A little bit of it could make you fire resistant, and could be useful in a fight. I'll try one. On the topic of trickery? No. One is enough. Either you mix defense with your weird chilies, or you go heavy on the intelligence. Don't need any more of your fancy tricks. Okay. So our first infusion. Now that I have access to infusions, I gotta be careful how they interact with the other ingredients. They might alter the drink in a way where I have to use different ingredients than usual. I should make sure to keep an eye on the coaster shape so I can mix the correct recipe. Okay, so we have our chilies. Ch 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 chilies. And we could make them a sparkling nebula, but let's just go with the southern brawler again. Strength with the chili. That's just a little bit that way. So that's an infused southern brawler. Not the right drink. It has to be a recipe that fits. What? How 
ist ja neu. Protects from physical and spiritual harm. Maybe it's that one. Pop the chili in first. That goes down to the end. And this one goes a little bit to there. Figured it. You're getting better. Thanks. Feeling tough already and dangerously close to catching fire myself. I think I could almost take on a dragon like this. Let's stay grounded. How urgent is the sunscreen? Pretty urgent. Sun tends to not take a break, even for vampires. Maybe he should sunbathe less then. That might solve his problems. Might. When's an easy solution ever been fun? Good point. I'll see what I can do. Maybe they've got some mice in that mangrove. Good luck. Won't be needing it. What I do need is that chamomile salve. I'm gonna go look for that blighter. Go easy on him. Mm. Thank you. I'll be waiting. Ah, oh, you've taken the hood down. You're slowly relaxing. Good evening to you, too. This quest wasn't here yesterday. That is correct. Hmm. Seems dangerous. It is mysterious. Sure. Like me. You could be a little less mysterious by telling me your name. Zephyr, did the wind carry you in? No, my legs. I want that quest. Well, you have it. Not just literally, physically, emotionally. Emotionally, I wanna take on that quest. Go to the castle to get the cape. I mean... Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, no one's gone to the castle yet, so if someone would like to go, the path would be open. So you know of the castle. Yes. Seems strange. It is. Vampire lives there. I heard rumors, whisperings of a strange fiendish woman residing there. What a coincidence, me too. Has she ever frequented your tavern? No, not recently. But she has. Once, had a vampire mixer. Interesting. So she was only here at night. Yes. Would you say she was unnaturally pale? <gasps> no. She had a lot of makeup on. But below that mask. Sure, yeah, she looked pretty dead below that. What kind of drink did she order? Blood. Interest. You sell blood? Of course. Whose blood? Did you hear about wolves avoiding the castle? Really? All of them? Yeah. She has a lot of werewolf traps set up. But all animals seem to stay clear of Marrow Castle. They say its doors are always locked, so nothing may come inside or leave and anything that tries to melts into her land in one way or another. As a grave, as a pile of decorative bones, as dirt feeding rotting flowers. They say death clings to her doorsteps like an everlasting melody. It sounds like a strange place. 
like a tomb for something still alive. Or for a goth. Goth or vampire, she seems to be a thief. It appears so. Do you not sympathize with that? Thievery is an honorable skill, but it must be achieved in secret. Or you're not worth the coins you pocket. Also, stealing a man's cape is just plain rude. I suppose. Only thing worse... I mean, that's me, sorry. <clears throat> Only thing worse is stealing a man's heart. It's true. Not if it's cursed. Especially then. Point is, if you can't defend yourself from having your trophies reclaimed, you must live with the consequences. The consequences being... you? Exactly. Definitely sounds like you know what you're doing. Of course. I'm one with the shadows in the wind. Gone before they even notice me. So you could easily swipe something else together with the cape, right? Certainly. Gold, gemstones, other treasures, whatever pays the bills. What about some interior decoration? Like what? Just something to pretty up my tavern? Maybe something useful that doubles as a decoration. Like a chair. Stealing a whole chair sounds a little too ambitious. I prefer something smaller. A trinket. My walls are a bit empty still. Wait, you're being serious? Absolutely. A small piece of furniture that once belonged to an eccentric vampire sounds like a wonderful addition to this tavern. I will see what I can do about it. You won't be disappointed. Well then, I trust you to deliver yourself to her doorstep and the cape back to me. Along with a neat little addition to my interior design. Sounds like I'll need stamps. Would you like some? No, too traceable. How about a drink, then? I could do with one of those. I heard your drinks hold inspiration of great magnitude. Allow you to dip into parts of yourself that you didn't previously know. Raise yourself from the shadow. What do you trade them for? Hmm. Secrets. Secrets. I have many. Grant me one. I shall. I know this may come as a shock to you, but I was already here just yesterday. You may not remember because you barely noticed me in the shadows. I was so stealthy. I spent hours watching you from afar. That is... definitely a secret. You cleaned a lot of glasses, served everyone with a smile. You looked so worried after that adorable green one left. Like you thought they might trip straight into a monster's maw. And you're swift with your hands and fast with the knife. Alright, enough secrets. You may have one of my infamous drinks and some of my infamous infusions. Infusions. Intriguing. What vile magic do you have to offer? For your purposes, I could benefit you could benefit from some fey crystals or a frozen pine cone. The frozen pine cones have absorbed some of nature's icy properties. They can help you form a magical frost barrier. The Fey Crystals hail from Avalon. If you used it, they'll turn you invisible, eventually, and for a bit. The expiration date's unpredictable. And some Phoenix Chilies, but I don't think that's useful for you. Interesting. So what dark depths of yourself are you looking for? I fear that Lady Evelyn may be of the undead nature. So I must be strong and vigorous if I want my stake in her heart before her fangs are near my neck. Now that does sound appealing. Strength I can do. And some frost armor should help with the fangs. Or perhaps the smarter route would be to avoid her wrath entirely. Out stealth her, steal the cape from below her pale nose, so she may lie in the shame of having lost against me. Such an approach would require the right amount of dexterity and some invisibility. Let's do that, because I don't want to kill the lady. And then... You know, we might meet her later on if she's been in here before. I feel like that would make more sense to go with the invisibility and the speed. I would think it would be that one. 
And it's the... Crystals. Which add up that direction. So it is this one. An infusion of swift strike. Hood's back up. Got shy. Didn't like being perceived. A drink that all vampires fear. A liquid sunrise. Not quite, but it's a good name. May I steal that? You don't ask for permission before you steal something in keep. Then it's no longer a clever ruse, but a mere trade. I see. Did you hear of my new drink, the liquid sunrise? Huh. Good one. Tastes like the sun. A cold sun. And I shall strike her down as such. The sun? Evelyn. That makes more sense. Goodbye and keep. I would say pray that the sun will carry me back to you. But my hope does not lie in the realm keepers and I shall be damned if they control my fate. Expect to see me again after the next sunfall. If you do not, speak of vengeance. Vengeance makes for an early grave. Or for a good story. Farewell. Or for a bitter end. Good evening. Evening, Fable. Did you have a good day? I did. Well, sort of. It was a little depressing. How so? Can I have a drink first? What are you looking for? Some zest? I mean, some zest. N no, not today. Something to help me wind down a little. Feel a little less like mushy moss. I still have to make the rounds around the grove later. Something that'll keep me awake and agile. Do you think you know me well enough to guess what I might need? I mean, is it just a swift strike again? Cause that's all you have a drink in here, baby. Hey, baby, all you have a drink in here is swift strike. You got your usual. There we go. A little bit of that one. <clears throat> a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Oh, that one. Why am I failing this? What am I? I'm missing the bottom corner. Such a dummy. <clears throat> oh, I can't stop coughing today. Absolute joke. I've had this cough for two months. <clears throat> Hopefully get to rest it over Christmas. Thank you. This is delicious. You always know what I need. I think I feel ready to tell you the story now. Go ahead. Do you remember Mr. Dragon? Lynn's deadbeat werewolf uncle, unfortunately. I think he's still on her mind. She's been very down since we came back, and so quiet that it's making me worried. I wanted to cheer her up. That's kind of you. How did you do that? Tried that. I just tried. It didn't go very well. I should probably just pretend it didn't happen. Fable. Tell me about it. <clears throat> okay. We have this small werewolf community in the Ashen Grove. A couple of lycanthrope-affected elves settled there about 200 years ago. And they've welcomed people like them ever since. They offer support for anyone trying to get their curse under control. And a home with a beautiful view on top. I thought if I took Kel in there, then I could show her that there's still hope for her uncle, even if he doesn't find a cure. She thought it was ridiculous and a little funny. At least until I started trying to involve the werewolves. Oh boy. I tried to tell them about Mr. Dragon so they could help cheer her up. I thought if I told them he's chasing a cure, they'd be interested. Maybe even offer to help him. 
but instead everyone just ended up being sad. And then we were all quiet. I'm sorry, Fable. Maybe it was a sweet idea, maybe just a little too soon. Or too late. I wish I could have done more on that day. Maybe made them talk it out, hug it out, or yell it out. That day's over. It's happened. It went how it went. All you can change is the now. I guess that's true. I took her on a walk after to my favorite spot in the grove. She told me a bit about her bubba. She sounds much she sounds much nicer than Dagon Dragon. Indeed. I hope the Wyvern Chimera is everything she hopes it to be. Perhaps it will be. I hope so. Well, may the stars of Cassiopeia and Leviathan guide her way. May they lead her down the right path and back to my tavern. Do you think she'll let me read her star sign soon? Maybe, if you ask nicely. Maybe I'd rather not bother her with it. Ask her. If you say so. I'll ask her when she comes back so I can draw her a chart. If she says no, I'll just keep guessing until I get it right. That's the spirit. I hope she will come back. Of course she will. They always do. I'd like to think so. I guess so. You should take a break from worrying. Maybe stay a while before heading back. Sounds like a good idea. I'll just idle here a bit if that's okay. Always. Greetings, innkeep. Greetings, Kyle. Greetings, green creature. Greetings, Mr. Vampire. Oh, how polite. Are you enjoying your drink? I am. Thank you. Then I shall leave you to its inspiring aftertaste. Innkeep, did you move your inn by chance? It took me hours to find it. Did I move my inn? Sure, I did. Ha, huh, I knew it. Your silly tricks will not work on me, mortal. Or, well, I'm not certain you are mortal, but you have silly tricks nonetheless. Instantly spotted the new alleyways that have formed themselves around your establishment. Perhaps even got lost in them in their winding paths and dark corners. Anything could be hiding within them. Like a vampire. No, silly snack. I don't need to hide. Except for games of hide and seek, and I'm very good at those. Maybe the inn wanted to play around with you. Mayhaps. But it underestimated, underestimated my skill. As a three times hide and seek world champion, I would never lose to such a ying youngling of an inn. It's not that young. The wood's not even rotting yet, dear innkeep. It still has many eons to go. That would be nice. As a celebration of a match well won, may I offer you a drink? Yes, I would be well deserved. Has that delicious blood of yours made it onto the menu yet? Not yet. A shame. Then I shall have some of that faux blood again, please. Faux. <laughs> the one time a vampire shows up in a game and I don't give them the stereotypical, like, sexy voice, you know? Ooh. Sounded like the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland or something. The blood. The blood. This one. True blood. Suki is mine. Mm -mm. Oh, not that one. Bam! Some faux blood for your bones. Ah, perfect innkeep. The only thing that could make me happier would be a drink lovingly titled The Innkeeper's Vein. Keep dreaming, Count Dracula. Speaking of dreams, how's the retrieval of my cape coming along? Swimmingly. Well, actually I think there's very little water involved. I wouldn't be so sure. 
My dear Evelyn has a beautiful pond filled with long-toothed spine guppies in her courtyard. It's her pride and joy. I would hope no one is swimming in that. But I have sent someone on your quest. I'm sure he'll return soon, and you and your cape can be reunited. Marvelous! Speaking of inseparable teams, where's Rhea? Oh, taking a day off. She demanded vacation time, so I said she could choose any day, and she chose today. I was also going to take a day off and spend her vacation with her. But when I wanted to follow her to the market, my sleeve caught on fire. And my hand. And my hair. So I was forced to stay back due to my allergies. The weeping amaryllis pollen are very bad this time of year. And the sun. The sun is also bad for vampires. It is? Yes. Right. I need sunscreen. It's in the works. Did you get to the, see the market later? I did. It was beautiful. Colourful, full of music that makes your heart dance. But I couldn't find Rhea anywhere. I felt a little lonely. Luckily, I managed to make a new friend in no time. Very tall and brooding, just how I like them. I inquired if I could try on his dark armor of swirling shadow and onyx bone. But he said if I tried to take it from him, he would turn me to ash. What a jokester. Dark armor of swirling shadow and onyx bone. Yes, a true connoisseur of fashion. He's just visiting, he said. Had great crap recommendations. Plum crepes with ash sprinkles. Yes, tasted deliciously dead. I see. I hope you enjoyed your evening together. We did, though I feel like he asked something of me. I promised I would remember. Perhaps he wanted my cape. Many people want my cape. Perhaps. I would have never agreed to that. It is my cape, after all. Maybe he wanted my Pasca recipe. Is it good? Very. And I would like it as well. Yes. You. Me. He asked me about you. Me. Yes. Said he's an old friend of yours. He's very curious about how your inn's doing. I sang your praises, of course, so he asked me to deliver your gre you greetings. And congratulations on a well-run establishment. How did he phrase it? Deliver my congratulations on the faux peace your precious innkeep has found in him house of denial. Very poetic. Very. If only I could remember his name. Does the description ring any bells for you? No, I'm afraid not. Too bad. Must be an old childhood friend. Maybe if you went to school together. I heard many friendships are formed in such halls. Maybe. Do you want to tell me more about your time at the market? Surely, I found the loveliest trinkets, like a little stuffed bear with a tiny raincoat or a crescent elder moon necklace. I found a gorgeous sun charm as well. I bought it for Rhea as a welcome back from vacation gift. It's very sweet. Your friend bought a delightful raven figurine with eyes of starlight. Please don't call him that. We should never deny our friends, even if we do not remember them. I don't remember any of my friends. Alas, I still love them, even if their memory lives only in my heart. People with ADHD. Anyhow, he said it was a gift to himself to celebrate the dawn of the month of the astral moon. I love Cassiopeia so dearly. She's the most beautiful month, is she not? A haven of starlight reflected in the primordial sea below. Only once a year is she this close to us, and only for a short period of time. To me, she is the harbinger of yearning and of change. I wonder how we will change this month. I hope to be more capeful and sunscreened by the end of it. Maybe even a little less alone. What about you? I like the way I am, but I wouldn't say no to stocking up on ingredients. Ah, oh, the refusal to change is dangerous, innkeeper. It always comes to those who will deny it the most. 
At the end of the astral moon, we shall no longer be who we once were. Sounds like a threat. By no means. Maybe it promises mourning, but celebration also, does it not? For example, my dear Rhea met me hating vampires, and now she likes me. True change has already occurred before the stars have changed, it seems. You are hard to dislike. Oh, how sweet of you. As sweet as my blood. I have a lot of it. I would hope you do. It runs warm when people are kind to me. In my millennia, kindness has always made me the happiest. There's nothing greater than friendship, don't you think? Nothing more fragile. Makes it all the more precious. Reminds me, I forgot a crucial part of the message. Our dear friend Stranger told me he would like to see you again. He said... What was it? Don't think too hard. Ah, of course, the letter. The letter. The polite young man gave me a letter to deliver to you. What a sweet gesture. I shall pass it on to you swiftly. Thank you. Aren't you not going to open it? No. I don't think now's the right time for a letter. Not enough moonlight. But wouldn't it be kind of romantic, dwelling in the memories of a friend? It would go so well with the fireworks. Too bad. I'll remember, I promise, and then I shall deliver his message in full. Don't think too hard about it. I do remember fireworks. What fireworks? I have no clue. He said he hopes you enjoy them. Fireworks. Doesn't that sound lovely? I hope they're not a private event. Fireworks. I think that would be difficult with fireworks. <gasps> I... Don't mean to interrupt, but... What is it, little fawn? Look outside. I think the fireworks have started. Oh, how beautiful they're falling from the sky. Hello, little fireworks. Sparkle on. Those aren't fireworks. They're stars. Dear player... You've reached the end of the Tavern Talk extended demo. That was so good. What a cool ending. I, like, I loved that last scene. There was like a little sag in kind of that third period. And then the vampire brought the level back up. And then this, this mystery of who this person is, what's in the letter. And now like the town is on fire. It's been a pleasure to take you on this little journey. Hope you enjoyed it. Ah, very good, guys. Tavern Talk. Let me know what you thought in a comment, if you'd like to see a full playthrough when this comes out in the future. And who your favourite character was. Personally, I liked the vampire. He was a lot of fun. And I will see you in the next video. There are some on the screen right now. If you want to go and check them out, go wishlist this game. If you want to, you know, get it yourself and stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging out. Good night. Bye-bye.